message I'm sharing today is called One of a Kind Woman. One of a Kind Woman. Proverbs 32, lady. You say, Niffin, there's not a Proverbs 32. I know. There's going to be. Because I'm writing it. Um, actually, this message title doesn't even fit the message. I'm baiting you. I'm using this because I was writing the other day and I started thinking about this thought, one of a kind woman. And I was thinking... It just came to me, Proverbs 32. Yeah. See, it's going to be about B.A. I don't want a book about B.A. Uh, she is one of a kind of woman. I, I sat down with her the other day and was telling her what I think the Lord had given me that I'm going to write in the near future about this. And I said, uh, the subtitle is going to be Proverbs 32 Lady. She goes, Wayne, there's no Proverbs 32. I said, when I'm through, there will be. Her story hadn't been written yet. So that's, that's where this title came from, One of a Kind Woman, the Proverbs 32 Lady. And I realized putting this out in public forum, somebody could steal that, so I went ahead and copyrighted it. Proverbs 31 may be the most taught, preached, frequent passage in Scripture on Mother's Day. I'm not real good on special day messages for some reason. I never have been. Um, I don't want to sound like I'm all spiritual and all that, but I, I like to preach what I feel the Spirit of God moves me to preach. And sometimes on special days, He didn't move me to preach on that subject, and so I didn't. But this passage that we're going to look at this morning may be the one that's used mostly on Mother's Day all around the world. There's no telling how many... Uh, teachers and preachers are ministering this word this morning out of Proverbs 31. But what I've noticed is that most of the women in church services leave a little discouraged from hearing the message on Proverbs 31. I mean, beginning of verse 10, we're given a standard that's way up here. It's way up here. And <laughs> And uh, we teach and preach like, man, this is nothing to this. Do this, and you're a great lady. And uh, people leave, and ladies leave, and they go, I don't think I, I measured up. Well, I'm going to take this text this morning and kind of take a little pressure off of you. Because I think what we do uh, is, is do ourselves a lot of harm and disservice when we look at everything that is said about this lady in Proverbs 31, that we have to match up. Let me tell you something right off the bat. There's not a woman that's ever lived that could match up to everything described of this woman in Proverbs 31. There's no way. Uh, and I'm going to show that to you. Several years ago, I was preaching a revival in a, in a church on the other side of Texas. I, I knew the the pastor quite well had known him for several years. And after one of the uh, services, he said, why don't you just come by the house and we'll have uh, some refreshments and just visit a while. I said, that'd be great. So we sit around the table and I could sense a little tension. Have you been around a couple and felt a little tension? Uh, yes, dear. And you could, you could hear that. Now, I know y'all can't relate to that. It's other people, okay? It's, it's Kyle and Judy, but no. <laughs> he just says, it's me. it's me. You can just sense a little tension. They're great people, and just because a couple may have a, a moment just doesn't mean that they're bad people. It happens. Um, but I could tell uh, something wasn't quite kosher. But anyway, uh, how we got to talking about marriage, I don't have a clue. But I remember her getting up and she began to walk toward the kitchen and before she left the table she said, you know, if you treat your wife like a thoroughbred, she won't act like a nag. And kept walking. My friend's face just grew about the color of Lyndon's blouse there, just white as a sheet. 
If you treat your wife like a thoroughbred, she won't act like a nag. I wouldn't say, ooh, but I, I just pretended, okay. But I think she said a lot of, a lot of things in that, in that statement. Um, in Proverbs 31, I'll, we'll begin in verse 10. I'm just going to give you a kind of a, a rock skipping over water approach to this. He says in verse 10, Who can find a virtuous wife? For her worth is far above rubies. He's simply saying it's hard to find a good wife. I think the uh, New American Standard Version says, An excellent wife who can find. A good woman is hard to find, the message says. The heart of her husband safely trusts her, so he will have no lack of gain. She does him good and not evil all the days of her life. What, what I read in these three verses here is that this is something that, that all women can do. Not all women can do what follows, neither can men. There's no person that can do this. I'll show it in just a second. But all people can do this, whether it's the husband or the wife. They can provide a safe place for their spouse. Especially guys. Have you been around guys? Guys don't talk much about their failures. Have you noticed that? They'll tell you about all the, the great games they played in high school. I could, me and Dave used to talk about this all the time and if you let hear me and Dave talk about our days in high school, we were the baddest of the bad. <laughs> Dave and I could tell you games, the points we scored. And it's true, we did. But we're legends in our own mind. We won't tell you about the times we fouled out. The times we got technicals. The times we got ejected from the John Tyler basketball game for fighting. We won't tell you that. Failures. Guys don't like to talk about failures. They won't talk about victories. Most people don't like to talk about failures, but women will more than men. If men had a safe environment, they would talk about their failures more often. I am a blessed man. B.A. gives me room to fail. She provides a safe place. I never had that. It is incredible. You've heard me share. I can come up with some incredible dreams. Man, I can think of some really cool stuff to do. Not one time has B. ever said, that is stupid. Well, that's crazy. Are you kidding me? Do you remember when you tried so-and-so's on it and it blew up in your face? Never once. But you know what she will say? I trust you. You know what that does to me? It makes me start pumping the brakes. She trusts me. So it makes me analyze my plans a little better and be a little more thorough. And I can tell you there are a lot of things that I thought were great but I could hear her say to me, I trust you. I trust you. And I didn't do it. And, and some of them I should have done it because it turned out to be pretty good, but I didn't do it because I didn't trust myself. But what I'm talking about is a safe place that, that everybody needs, whether you're a man or a woman. You need a safe place. You need somebody. Boy, it's great for a spouse to say, you know, sweetheart, I, tried, it, I fell flat on my face. It didn't work. And they don't scold you, they don't belittle you, because a guy does not like to be belittled. A guy doesn't like to hear, you blew that. Um, <clears throat> most of you know what we're going through. This may be the toughest season of my life, bar none. And there are times you feel like your legs are going to buckle under you. And do you know what she'll say to me on occasions? And I'll tell her, I love it when you lie. Just keep lying. <laughs> she, she'll say something like this. Wayne, thank you for taking care of me. Thank you for taking care of me. 
It's a safe place. That is a one-of-a-kind woman. That's why I'm going to write that book. She's a Proverbs 32 woman. There's a lot of things we can't do, and we're going to look at these, but we can do this. We can provide each other with a safe place. If you're a real good friend, it'll be a safe place to someone. And they will be, people really want to talk about things that didn't work out, things they tried, things that they failed at. They just don't trust anybody. It's, you know, we're not asking for answers. We're just asking for somebody to listen and care. Because just because you messed up or did something that didn't work doesn't mean you're an idiot. It just means something didn't work. Maybe I should have thought it through better. Made better decisions. But I didn't. But it does not devalue you as a human being. Let's, let's move on. It says in verse uh, 13, She, talking about the woman, seeks wool and flax and willingly works with her hands. She's a, she's a seamstress. You know, there may not be anybody in this room that can thread a needle. Do you remember your mama sewing? Well, she could... It has that... that what was that? Uh, yeah, one of those. On her thumb and push that in. I cannot tell you how many times I've taken shirts and blue jeans to mom's. When I wanted some shorts, I had some jeans that were torn up, she'd cut them off for me. Or, I mean, I cut them off, and she told me never do that again. Because I cut them off, and when she seen them, they were Daisy Dukes. And, <laughs> you know, some of you don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> a little tad sh short. She said, well, why didn't you cut them off too short? I said, well, they were here. I know, but i got to seam them. So I started letting her cut them off. But the woman can sell. Well, what about the one lady sitting there? Here, this was seamstress. Oh, I, she seeks wool and flax and wool and works with her hands. What if I can't do that? Does that mean you're, you're not measuring up to being a 31 lady? Some do. They, they feel the way. It says in verse 14, she's like a merchant ship. She brings her food from afar. That means a long ways off, Jeff, not, not a fire. Okay. She has a worldwide business. This is not a local lady here. She has merchant ships. She has a dock. I mean, ships come. She's a pretty good lady, isn't she? She's a businesswoman. Verse 15 says, um, She rises while it's yet night and provides food for her household. Man, alive. Has a worldwide business. She's a businesswoman. <laughs> and she gets up while it's at night and cooks and provides for the family. It says, and a portion for her maid servants. She has servants. And she takes care of them. It says, she considers a field and buys it. And from her profit, she plants <clears throat> a vineyard. She's in agriculture, she's in real estate. Do you wonder why ladies leave a service going, she doggy? I don't match up. It says she girds herself with strength and strengthens her arms. She's in an exercise program. She probably whipped Dennis. She perceives that her merchandise is good. And her lamp does not go out by night. She never gets tired. Last Sunday morning, when I got up, I knew something was wrong. Um, I just felt something off, weird. Uh, I knew I hadn't drank too much the night before. wasn't that much, but just kidding you. Okay, don't leave your sins up. I didn't say just play with. But I knew something was wrong, and so I, I took I took my vital signs on the little sheen I have. My blood pressure and stuff was spot on, but my heart rate was 144. So I knew I was in another episode of AFib that put me in CCU for a while. And uh, Sunday morning, if you saw me sitting down there, I was not 
being rude, I was, about, I was doing that kick from fainting because I was about to go out. And so I called Ken or sent him a text and asked him if he'd bring his machine to make sure, you know, mine was a little cheap one, he's got a real nice one. And he took it back there and it read exactly what mine did, my pulse rate 144 went. And uh, if your heart's racing that, that fast and you're not doing anything, you feel like you have working out and you never stop. So I just kind of took it easy the rest of Sunday afternoon, called my doctor Monday morning, and sh long story short, I'm wearing this uh, heart monitor now. Uh, I'll wear it through next uh, Friday. I'll take it, on, take it back to heart hospital. But when Brooke and Carter came in, guess who Carter wants to hang with? Oh, he loves his papa. We, and I thought, well, I, I get up early and I start writing, get my writing time in. Well, guess who was coming down the hall? <laughs> da, 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 da. Hey, Papa. Hops up in my lap. Well, the day started. My writing was done. And we went and went and went and went. And I was doing this. He's just four years old. About uh, 5.30 or so, he laid down on the hardwood floor and was out. I wanted to lay down on it too and go out, but, but I didn't. But here it says, she does all this, and then it says, her lamp does not go out by night. She never gets tired. Do you, have you ever, can you relate to that? Never get tired? No, but I promise you, women do more than men. Usually. Now, for the last several years, I've got a taste of the unusual. And, and you get tired. She stretches out her hands to the distaff, and her hand holds the spindle. She extends her hand to the poor. Yes, she reaches her hands to the needy. She's not, not afraid of snow for her household, for her household is close. She's a philanthropist. Wow. She makes tapestry for herself. Her clothing is fine linen and purple. Are you wearing what you made? Read it again. She makes tapestry for herself. I mean, this lady is docked out. This is the June Cleaver <laughs> of the Old Testament. You remember June Cleaver? Yeah. Leave it to Beaver's mama. Ward was her husband, I believe. He had come home from work. She was dressed like she's going to church. Supper's ready on the table. Tablecloth on the table. Beautiful dinner. And she's dancing around, just swirling around. You, give me a break. What do you mean supper's not ready yet? I'll get you a sandwich. <laughs> not, not this lady. Not this lady. She's in fine tapestry and fine and linen. Purple, that's royalty. Her husband is known in the gates when he sits with the elders of the land. She makes linen garments and sells them and supplies sashes for the merchants. Strength and honor her clothing. She shall rejoice in time to come. Look at this. In verse 1, she opens her mouth with wisdom. She's a professor. She opens her mouth with wisdom. And on her tongue is the law of kindness. She watches over the ways of her household and does not eat the bread of idleness. This lady has got it together. And guys, if we use this standard to measure our wives by, can you spell disappointment? If you can't, I can give you some passages to show where you don't measure up either. It's a two-way street. The Word of God here is not saying that one person has to have all of this. Maybe one or two. But all of it, that's a little pressure, isn't it? That, that's not what the, the writer of Proverbs is saying. But what he gives us following, everybody can do. Somebody may not have an interest of sewing. They, they may not have the interest of being a philanthropist or a professor or a merchant 
or in agriculture. But they can do this. It says in verse 28, her children rise up and call her blessed. I love that. It means to speak well of. Blessed. Her husband also, and he praises her. Many daughters have done well, but you excel them all. Charm is deceitful and beauty is passing. But a woman who fears the Lord, who respects the Lord, she shall be praised. Give her the fruit of her hands and let her own works praise her in the gates. Her children rise up and call her blessed. Her husband praises her. You need to mark that third. Is charming, deceitful. Is deceitful and beauty is passing. I had... Um, let me kind of make this thing kind of uh, nondescript. I know somebody that said about his wife, well, she's put on a lot of weight. And I looked at this guy who's 75, and I, I know this person well enough to, to be pretty frank. I said, have you looked in the mirror lately? You said your wife had put on a lot of weight. You don't have any hair on your head. <laughs> Where'd your hair go? Matter of fact, when's the last time you saw your feet? But my wife's put on a lot of weight. Look at your belly, man. He eats good. Can barely walk. But my wife ain't what she used to be. None of us are. None of us are. Y'all you know, heard me tell the story, and it's kind of true. <laughs> Not totally true, but kind of. In, in, in our bathroom, there's this mirror. And I think the mirror's probably eight feet long, something like that. It's big. I need to get rid of that rascal. It's not that funny, folks. But golly, it shows everything. In <laughs> I stepped out of the shower one day, and it scared me. It, you know, I was, I had Brooke tell me here not long ago, she says, Dad, where do your guns go? And it wasn't before, too long before that, she was telling me, you know, at your age, you got some guns. Where'd, you, where'd your guns go? Yeah. They went pop. I, I don't know what I was wearing that day, but I sure needed to iron it. I tell you what, it, none of us, None of us. <laughs> you may not want to put this one on. None, none of us are what we used to be. Come on. That's just the reality. But these are just houses, just shells. The real us is still here. Maybe we fell in love with the body and not the person. I better move on, okay? But beauty and, and all this is just passing, but the conjunction of contrast, but a woman who respects the Lord, she shall be praised. In your handout, I gave you uh, Proverbs 31, 28 through 31. In verse 28, her children rise up and call her blessed. There's nothing, I'm telling you, there's nothing like your adult child tell you how they love you and how good you are. I never get tired of hearing Justin, grown man, 43 years old, teacher and coach, you see, Dad, I'm so glad you're my pops. Man, that never gets old. Thank you for teaching me what you've taught me. You taught me everything right. And I appreciate that. He'll give me a quote. He called me the day. Uh, he said, do you recognize this? I go, yeah. Where'd you get that? He said, Dad, you gave that to us in 1984. He said, I used it with my team the other day. But did you really? You just did. There was a, an article written on him in the Tyler paper just a few weeks ago. He's been very successful as a coach and um, 
He's gone to the state tournament five times, and uh, four of those were in a row. Um, he, he just he can get kids to play over their head. And uh, the quote that was in the newspaper that he gave them was a quote that I gave you in this in, in messages in this service. He said, "Did you catch the quote?" I said, "I sure did." He said, "Thanks for that." I used it and I claim it. I said, <laughs> That's okay. But there's nothing like hearing your grown kids say, you're special. You're special. Their kids, their children, call them blessed. The husband blesses them. He praises her. Why? She's a safe place. Verse 30, the Lord praises her. Her Lord praises her. In verse 31, what I want you to write there is works and words. And I don't know why I wrote the word characterize. That's, that's the wrong word. I don't know where that jumped out. It must have been uh, Jeff that did that. I, I didn't do that. But works and words authenticates her value. Not characterizes. I don't know where that came from. But it validates her. Her works, what she does, in her words, what she says authenticates her value, validates her. The, the simple takeaways that I give you this morning are reversed, and they're reversed on purpose. Because I saw a reversal in Proverbs 31. It wasn't just something I came up with. I saw, I noticed that things were reversed at the end of this chapter in Proverbs 31. But remember this, nurture your children. You may not be a worldwide merchant. You may not be a business owner. You may not be a seamstress. You may not be a professor. You may not be a philanthropist. But you can nurture your children or your grandchildren or your great-grandchildren. Granny's a great-great-great-grandmother now. Four greats. She is great. Great-great? Great-great. Oh, God. Great. <laughs> Nerd, <laughs> dogs going. Mm. <laughs> yeah, that's amazing, huh? <laughs> it's amazing. But you can nurture your children. I, I love to watch uh, Brooke nurture Carter. I I've never. I know he's my grandson. I know that. But I've never seen a four-year-old that can communicate like he communicates and the words he uses in context. It's amazing. I told him to do something, the other, I think it was yesterday, do something. He said, pa Papa, I actually did that yesterday. Actually? Four years old. I actually did that yesterday. That's in, that's in content. Syntax is perfect. Four year old, I can't get my syntaxes right. It's amazing. As he's four years old, so sometimes he can say some smart. Thing. But to watch Brooke nurture him is absolutely stunning. And it will pay big dividends. Nurture your children. Nurture your grandchildren. Nurture your great-grandchildren. And, and it don't have to be your biological kids. I saw a statement one time that says, I'm not a stepdad, I'm a step-up dad. I have two girls that uh, when B.A. and I got married, Alex was three, something like that. And she's 48 now. And uh, she, for a long time, she called me Daddy Wayne. Daddy Wayne. And I never got offended. Then one day, it was Dad. I didn't tell her you need to call her. I'd pick her up at King's Manor, daycare. And she said, Daddy Wayne's here. And they're thinking, Daddy Wayne? Or Granddaddy. And uh, it just shifted to Dad. Brooke, I didn't get to her because she was a grown adult when her mother and I married. And one day she just started calling me dad. I remember uh, when her mother and I were going to get married and I was talking to Brooke and I was telling Brooke, I wanted, you know, an adult, adult talk. And I said, uh, uh, I just want you to know, Brooke, I love you, Mom. And I'll never forget what she said. It crushed me. She said, we'll see. 
You ever want to slap somebody? That might not have been a good start. <laughs> I go, okay, okay. But now she said, Dad, Dad, man, you love Mother Donna. I said, yeah, I do. You take so good care of her. Thank you. And I remind her that story a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I want her to know. Do you remember the talk you and I had in the backyard? Mm-hmm. You remember saying, we'll see, and you had that mm -hmm, on your face? What do you think now? She goes, that's wrong. Nurture your kids. Pour into them. Have, have you ever seen, do you know where a baby, a child begins to get their uh, identity? To affirm their worth? Watch a young mother with her firstborn. After the second, third born, forget it. No, the firstborn. They're, they're just, watch them. And they're going, you're just the cutest little thing. Your mama's little prize. You're going to grow and be big and strong. What are they doing? They're nurturing that child. And they're putting their worth into them. It's amazing. And most of them don't, don't even realize what they're doing. How do they, why do they do it? Because it's innate. God just put that in us. We, we not can be a merchant or a professor or do all these other stuff. We can nurture kids and grandkids. Number two, which just moves us closer to the number one answer. Give your husband a safe place. Man, I messed up, babe. You know, you told me, and I bought that last time and didn't like it, and I, I did it again. A place where he can say I messed up. A place where she can say, honey, I overdrew her account again. The number one answer, love God with all of your being. That's number one. Love God with all your being. That's the Proverb 32 lady. That's the one of a kind woman. I mean, I can do the others very good, but I'll tell you what you will do. If a person will love God with all of their being, they'll find giving their husband a safe place will be a lot easier. Has God given us a safe place? Yes. yes. If we love God with all our being, we can nurture our children, grandchildren, great-grandkids. Love God with all our being. And I'm glad we sung that song again today. Nothing else. That's it. Nothing else. Jesus is the most important thing. And when He becomes the most important thing, other things begin to align. Whether you're a woman,